in Goshen. 14,038 people. In New York, 19.54 million. In the United States, 327.2 million. And in the world, 7.53 billion. As we look at these numbers, could it be possible to please everyone in the entire world? In order to do that, we would have to learn 6,500 languages and travel to 195 countries. Then let's say we spent one day in every city in the entire world. That would take us roughly 50,000 days nonstop without a break. No one has that kind of time. And besides, it is in no way humanly possible for anyone to accomplish this goal. Do you like my TED talk so far? You know, is it okay if I keep going? If not, I could talk about something else. It's fine by me, really. The people who commonly ask these questions are known as people pleasers. They are the people who are less confident in themselves and seek the approval of others. A people pleaser might write and rewrite a text over and over and over again because they fear that the person receiving their text might take it the wrong way. The last thing a people pleaser wants to do is hurt someone's feelings. It is an everyday internal struggle, putting themselves on the front line. They don't realize the bullets they are taking for other people just to get their seal of approval and see them smile. People pleasers don't follow the rule, three strikes and you're out. Their rule is a little more lenient. It's more like, I'll give them one more chance. They won't do it again. You know what, maybe they'll change. But in reality, they know that no force can change these people. If the entire human population was like this, like people pleasers, we would have the artists afraid to publish their artwork. The athletes that would be afraid to compete. The songwriters that would be scared to discuss, they would be scared to publish any of their music. And the people presenting their TED Talks, like us, we would never go up on stage because why? Because we fear that our ideas, our life, our work just isn't good enough? When I decided to give a talk, my biggest challenge wasn't that I was afraid of public speaking. It was that I was afraid that people would judge my idea and not approve of it, hoping that everyone would like my talk. So how do I know all about this? I've been a people pleaser for an exhausting amount of time. <laughs> for 14 years, I have struggled with this problem. But for 200,000 years, humans have struggled with it. It only took me about seven minutes to convey this message to you, but it takes one second to fix the problem. I have come to the conclusion that I shouldn't waste my valuable time and energy on the people who don't value my perspective. I have to find a way to be sincerely happy by doing what's best for me, not what's best for everyone else. I have to live my life at my own speed and how I want to, and I will reach self-happiness and happiness is something we should all have. My volleyball team, a couple weeks ago, we had a tournament and we didn't play as well as we're capable of. And believe me, we're capable of a lot, but as all teams, we got into a slump. And as captain of my team, I felt solely responsible for my team's bad performance because I thought that maybe if I encouraged them just a little more, if I even did better myself, we would have won. But one person on a team of 12 can't move mountains. It is impossible. It is up to all of us. Theodore Roosevelt said, believe in yourself and you are halfway there. Once you overcome the obstacle in knowing the greatness you possess, you will be entitled to great achievements and your days of people pleasing will be over. I know it might sound overrated and cliche, but the happiness you harness is the most important and no one can take that away from you. You are not required to set yourself on fire to keep others warm. However, you are required to have a fire burning inside you, pushing you to your limits to achieve great things, 
Just remember to believe in yourself. Thank you, and I hope you like my TED Talk.